almost any new 3D printer released recently comes with clipper pre-installed or at least with clipper-like features. The last month brought a bunch of new 3D printers with impressive features and speeds, like the Bamboo Labs X1 and P1P, Doval SV07, the new Prusa MK4, Vorons using clipper, having input shaping, pressure advance and more right out of the box. If you don't want to buy one of these new machines, because you don't have the space or don't want to spend that much money, then you may have considered installing Clipper for your 3D printer to get at least pressure advance and input shaping. If there still wasn't one problem, you can't get a Raspberry Pi for it. And if you can, it is at an outrageously high price. And that situation doesn't seem to change soon. And with a Raspberry Pi out of reach, what can you do? There is light at the end of the tunnel. A solution which gets your 3D printer clipperized in less than an hour. The MakerBase MKS Pi. I show you how to convert a bad slinger like my Illigo Neptune 2 run with Clipper instead of the pre-installed firmware. But this procedure will work for your bed slinger too. I also show you how to do first bed leveling, how to calibrate your extruder and get input shaping up and running so that you can achieve higher print speeds while maintaining good print quality. And finally, I prove the achievements in printing a Banshee in far less than 30 minutes. The MakerBase MKS Pi is much cheaper than a Raspberry Pi and has been developed especially to run Clipper. It has a powerful 4-core 64-bit rock chip processor, 1 GB of DDR3 memory, multiple USB ports, one of which is USB 3, an Ethernet port and HDMI and TFT display interface. Unfortunately, it is not equipped with Wi-Fi out of the box. But that's not a problem. You can simply use a small USB Wi-Fi adapter. It has an SD card slot and support for eMMC memory, which is usually faster. As an optional accessory, it directly supports touch displays, which can be used, but you can operate Clipper completely without using a web browser. I use a USB Wi-Fi adapter. But when the signal is weak, an Ethernet cable is recommended to get a stable connection. I spent my own money on all the hardware you see in the video and I'm not affiliated with their manufacturers. Time to get our hands dirty and prepare the MKS Pi and your 3D printer with Clipper. As usual, you find all links needed for the downloads in the description below. To follow this guide, you will need to download and install some applications. First, Belina Etcher, which is required to write the operating system image for the MKS Pi to a micro SD card or EMC memory. Then Putty, to directly connect to the MKS Pi and get a terminal window to issue the required commands. WinSCP, which lets you also directly connect to the MKS Pi to copy files from and to the MKS Pi in a side-by-side -side explorer-like way. Finally, Notepad++, which allows for easy editing of files. The MKS by GitHub page describes how to install the system image, but assumes that you already have a Clipper ready 3D printer. I worked my way through it to find the best approach to do the installation. I'll also explain the steps needed to compile the Clipper binary and flash it to your 3D printer's control board. Though optional, I like having a display to see and control my 3D printers. If you have one, then use the provided FFC cable and connect it to the MKS Pi's display connector. I have to say that I'm not that satisfied with the touch screen's usability. Moving the axis works, though it sometimes does not detect the touch correctly or in the wrong position. The most valuable way to connect the MKS Pi is using a network cable. I prefer Wi-Fi when possible. Since the MKS Pi does not come with onboard Wi-Fi, I use a USB Wi-Fi adapter. I show you how to set up the connection later. If you chose to use eMMC instead of an SD card, put it in the provided eMMC to micro SD card adapter and follow the next steps. Download the latest system image for the MKS Pi, which is by time of making this video dated March 21st, 2023. MakerBase provides a Google Drive download link where you can get it. Start Belina Etcher. Click Flash from File and select the downloaded zip file as source. Put the micro SD card into your PC's SD card slot, eventually using an adapter. Ignore and close any additional windows popping up on the screen. Click Select Target and choose the appearing drive as target in Belina Etcher. Double check your choice to avoid overwriting the wrong one. Click on Flash to start burning the image to your micro SD card. After a few minutes, the image should have been flashed successfully. Again, close any windows that appear on the screen. 
we don't need them. If you trust your SD card, you can skip the verification to speed things up. Take the micro SD card and put it into the slot of the MKS Pi with the contacts facing upwards or install the EMMC to the MKS Pi like shown. Unfortunately, the MKS Pi's USB-C port can't be used to power it up. You have to connect a power cable to the power input connector. Either make one yourself or buy one, half a meter should be sufficient. Connect the other end to the 12 to 24 volt power supply of your 3D printer. Some control boards have a dedicated connector which you can use. Power up your 3D printer. The LED on the MKS Pi should start flashing to indicate it's booting. After a short moment, you should also see the boot animation on the display. Ignore the error shown. It's because you haven't prepared and connected the 3D printer yet. I found it the easiest to use the provided USB-C cable to connect the MKS Pi to the computer. Start Buddy and select Serial as connection type in the dialog. Next, you need to know the COM port that has been assigned to the MKS Pi. You can look it up in the Device Manager. If you don't see it, unplug and replug the USB-C cable. Then you'll notice a COM device disappearing and reappearing. This is the one you have to enter in the Serial Line field in Putty. In the Speed field, enter 1,500,000, looks strange but works. For later use, provide a name in the Save Sessions field and click Open. A terminal window appears with a quote to enter the user for the MKS Pi. If you don't see it, hit Enter to make it appear. Type MKS for the user. Then for the password type MakerBase, which is the same for the root user. And you should see the welcome screen showing you some system information. To set up your Wi-Fi connection, enter NMTUI. Some images show an error, Network Manager is not running. To fix that, start it by typing sudo systemctl start network manager service. The password, if asked, is again MakerBase. Then retry to start an empty UI. Use the keyboard arrow keys to select activate a connection. A list of available Wi-Fi networks show up from which you select your Wi-Fi. Type in your Wi-Fi network's passphrase and confirm it. An asterisk in front of the Wi-Fi network shows that it is connected. Leave the tool by pressing the escape key multiple times until you are back at the command prompt. I found that Wi-Fi is unreliable, especially when the Wi-Fi signal is not the strongest. The best way to get around this is to use a network cable connected to the Ethernet port of the MKS Pi or maybe trying other Wi-Fi adapters. Sometimes the Wi-Fi won't connect after a reboot. Then unplugging and putting back in the adapter often solves the problem. Next you have to compile the clipper binary to flash to your 3D printer's control board. To find out the required settings, enter CD Clipper Config Issue LS to see the directory contents. Besides some generic and sample configurations, you'll see several printer configurations. If your printer is among them, then you are lucky. Otherwise, things aren't hopeless, but need more investigation, which I will show in a follow-up video to this one. It is the configuration Clipper needs to know how to access your 3D printer's MCU. Copy it to Clipper's config directory using the following command, config followed by your printer's configuration file name, followed by tilde, printer data config printer.cfg. Display the content of the printer configuration for your 3D printer by issuing the command less configuration. For my Illigo Neptune 2, it's less printer Illigo Neptune 2 2021.cfg. The comments contain the information which you need in the next step. Some printers, like the Illigo Neptune 2, come with different control board revisions. Then you have to find out which one is built into your printer. Then write down the configuration, that is, the processor model, if you have to enable extra low-level configurations, the bootloader size, and which serial interface to select. Type Q to exit the less command. Then go up one directory by typing cd dot dot. Back in the clipper directory, enter make clean ampersand make menu config. This opens the configuration dialog to prepare the compilation of the clipper binary for your 3D printer. To enable the extra low level configuration options, press the spacebar. Use the down arrow and then the right arrow to navigate into the menu to select the microcontroller architecture menu. Move the highlighted line up or down to the processor architecture of your control board and press the spacebar. Move the selection to the processor model line and press spacebar again. Highlight the line according to the processor mentioned in the printer configuration and select it. This brings you back one level. 
highlight the bootloader offset line and enter the menu by pressing space. Like with selecting the processor, select the required bootloader offset line. Then you have to set the communication interface to the value mentioned in the printer config. For the Illigo Neptune 2, it's serial on USART PB11 PB10. If your config file contains more options to change, then do so. Finally, to leave and save the configuration changes, press Q and Y. In the next step, you'll have to compile the Clipper binary for your 3D printer. Just issue the command make and wait until the compilation has finished. The comments in the printer configuration should also describe how to flash the Clipper bin file to your 3D printer. Some 3D printers can be flashed directly after you connect them to the MKS Pi. For others, like the Neptune 2, depending on the installed controller board, the script has to be executed or just the file renamed. To flash a new firmware on my Illigo Neptune 2, I need to copy the firmware to an SD card. Other printers use USB sticks. Check your 3D printer's manual about the firmware update procedure. Using WinSCP, I connect to my MKS Pi and go to the out directory. There I right-click on the Illigo bin file and copy it to my SD card. Before continuing, I made sure I've got a copy of the original firmware. If things go wrong, so that I can revert it back. I think it's a good idea if you do the same. I turn off the Neptune 2, then insert the SD card containing the new Clipper firmware. Then I turn it back on. The display shows the flashing progress. I start the 3D printer by turning it off and on when the process has finished. If not already done, Connect your 3D printer to one of the MKS Pi's USB ports using its USB cable. You could also connect your 3D printer over a UART connection if it provides the necessary pins, but I don't cover this here. Makerbase already installed some front ends to control Clipper from a web browser, as well as Clipper screen for use with TFT touch screens. Personally, I prefer mainsail over fluid, so I continue using that. I also like using Octoprint because it offers many plugins which make using the 3D printer more comfortable, but that isn't installed yet. The default hostname given to the MKS Pi is What a Wonder MKS Pi. Open a web browser and enter http colon dash dash MKS Pi. The fluid dashboard is shown. The notification bell in the upper right shows if there is a message to check. Here it says that updates are available, so let's do it. I click on update all and wait for the update to finish. The updated components are automatically restarted. Once I had the case that the update broke the installation because of a broken repository. Searching for a solution, I found a Reddit post which pointed me to the instructions on how to recover from a broken repo. I followed the described procedure by connecting to the MKS Pi using PuTTY, which still worked. After issuing the commands to restore Moonraker and Clipper, everything worked again. In case you need to do it, you will find the links in the description. I like the cleaner mainsail interface better, so I continue using that. The mainsail interface is running on port 81. On the dashboard, you see an error message telling that some configuration is missing. Let's fix that. Click on the wrench icon to see the folder containing the configuration files. Open the printer configuration and include the mainsail configuration at the top. When using Fluid, add Fluid CFG instead. Click Save and Restart and the error message is gone. When you've modified your printer, like I did, shown in this video, link below, then you have to do an extruder calibration because the E-steps per millimeter are different than the ones of the stock extruder. Instead of an E-steps per millimeter setting, Clipper uses a value named rotation distance. If you know the steps per millimeter of your 3D printer before doing the Clipper update, then you just need to convert that value using the formula. Rotation distance is full steps per rotation times micro steps divided by the steps per millimeter. As an example, for the Neptune 2 with 134 e-steps per millimeter and a stepper motor with 200 steps per rotation driven with 16 micro steps, this calculates to 200 times 16 divided by 134, which equals to 23.88, which is almost the value in the comment in the printer configuration. To get an exact result, 
first gets the current rotation distance, which can be looked up in the extruder section. I'm in luck, because I upgraded the Neptune 2's extruder with the one used in the 2S, so that I can use the suggested value in the command. Nevertheless, I check that it's tuned correct. I do it by making a mark 70mm away from where the filament goes into the filament runout sensor. Then I heat up the nozzle to the loaded filament's printing temperature. Now I use the console in mainsail to set the extruder into incremental mode by sending G-code G91 followed by G1, E50, F60 to request the extruder to slowly extrude 50mm of filament. When the extrusion stops, I measure the distance of the mark to the filament runout sensor. Finally, to get the rotation distance to put into the configuration, I first calculate the actual extruder distance, which is the initial mark distance minus the subsequent mark distance, and using that value, the rotation distance equals the previous rotation distance times the actual rotation distance divided by the requested extruder distance. Then I replace the existing value in the configuration with the calculated one and click on Save and Restart to use it. The first thing you want to do is to level the print pad. If a bed probe is installed, it can be done automatically. If you haven't the probe installed yet, like me, then you have to do a manual leveling using the paper method, using a sheet of copy paper as a distance gauge. Don't worry, it's easy. Clipper guides you through it using a half-automated approach. Check that your bed and nozzle are clean and have no plastic remains on them. The leveling should be done at room temperature. Home the printer by executing G28 using the console, then enter and execute bed screws adjust. The nozzle moves to the first bed screw position, adjust it so that you can move the paper between the nozzle and the bed with a slight resistance. When satisfied, click adjust it, which moves the nozzle to the next position. Follow the steps by either clicking adjust it when you had to adjust the bed screw or accept when it already felt right. Continue that way. The process automatically finishes when you accepted all bed screw positions. Alright, let's dive into the exciting world of configuring Pressure Advance in your Clipper 3D printer. Pressure Advance in Clipper is a feature that helps with the negative effects of sudden speed changes during fast printing. It reduces stringing, improves corner sharpness and maintains high print quality even when printing faster than 100mm per second. To do so, Clipper controls the filament flow by approximating the pressure in advance during a particular print move. It slightly increases the filament flowing into the nozzle just before an acceleration move and it decreases the filament flowing into the nozzle just before the printer decelerates. Follow these steps to unlock its magic. Download the large hollow square STL from the provided URL in the Clipper documentation. To generate the test G-code, you have to adjust your slicer settings. Open your preferred slicer software. I show how to do it in Prusa Slicer 2.6. Locate the layer height setting and set it to 75% of your nozzle size. For example, if you have a 0.4mm nozzle, set the layer height to 0.3mm. Find the infill setting and set it to 0% for a solid print. Look for the speed settings and set all of them to 100mm per second. This will allow the printer to replicate instant speed changes at higher values. Disable or set acceleration settings to zero to avoid unwanted effects. If your slicer has an auto cooling parameter, turn it off. This will prevent any slowdowns during printing that could affect the final results. Make sure to disable any machine limits or auto speed settings in your slicer to allow clipper full control. Now open the square tower STL in your slicer and slice it. Check that the model will be printed with 100mm per second in all places by selecting speed in millimeter per second from the legend, except for the first layer, which should be printed slower. Then export the G-code. Open the clipper console, enter the command, set velocity limit square corner velocity equals 1, Excel equals 500. To enable the printer to adjust speeds at corners and highlight the pressure advance effects. If you have a direct extruder set up, input the command tuning tower command equals set pressure advance parameter equals advance start equals zero factor equals dot zero zero five in the console. For a Bowden extruder setup use, tuning tower command equals set pressure advance parameter equals advance start equals zero, factor equals dot zero two zero instead. Now upload and print the prepared G-code. 
During the printing process, keep an eye on the clipper console. Notice how the pressure advanced tuning value changes with each layer. This is where the printer fine tunes its performance. You don't have to wait for the whole print to complete. If you see the edges are getting worse, the print can be cancelled. If you let the print finish, it may look similar like one of my test prints. Once the print is complete, examine the corners of the test print. You may observe slightly hinged or bulging corners in the bottom layers and under extrusion in the top layers. Grab a caliper or ruler and measure the distance from the bottom layer to the layer with the best corner quality. Now let's calculate the pressure advance value using the formula pressure advance equals start plus measured height times factor, in my case it's 0 plus 12.6 times 0 0.020, which would be 0 0.252. Open the printer.cfg file in the configuration section. Locate the extruder settings and add the command pressure advance cologne 0 0.252 at the end of the section. Save the changes and restart the firmware for the new settings to take effect. Since the pressure advance value heavily depends on the filament type and printing temperature, I prefer to enter that value in the start G code section of the used filament profile in my slicer. I do that for each filament profile I have and that ensures that I always use the right pressure advance value no matter what filament I use. Being the first firmware offering input shaping is for sure one reason for Clipper's popularity. It can be done manually, but it's more fun using an accelerometer like an ADXL345, especially because the MKS Pi already comes with an interface to connect it and has the required libraries installed by default. For a bed slinger, the measurement is done in two steps, one for the x-axis and one for the y-axis. Therefore, two mounts are required. I searched for them on printables and thingiverse, modified them slightly to provide a better fit and printed them. I crimped some wires according to the image on the MKS Pi's GitHub page and connected them to the interface and the ADXL345. To do the y-axis input shaping, mount the accelerometer to the heat bed, then follow the excellent described steps in the documentation. Go to the printer config and add the ADXL configuration section by simply copy and pasting the parameters from the GitHub page. After save and restart, check that the accelerometer works using the command accelerometer query. Then add the resonance tester section to your printer config and change the first two values so that they are in the middle of your heat bed. Now increase the acceleration limits for the test. Before doing the calibration, the printer must be homed using G28. The next command ensures that any probably active input shaping is turned off. If everything's ok, start the y-axis calibration using the command shaper calibrate axis equals y. You'll see and hear how the tuning process moves the print bed at continuously higher frequencies which are also printed in the main sale console. When it's finished, it calculates and determines the best values to use and recommends an input shaper suited best. Also take a note of the suggested maximum acceleration. You'll need it later to adjust the maximum acceleration in your printer config. Enter saved config to update your printer configuration with it. Next mount the ADXL to the print head and repeat the above steps, but this time use shaper calibrate axis equals x to run the tuning. Finally update your printer config with the suggested input shaper parameters by issuing save config again. Also, don't forget to note the recommended acceleration value for the chosen input shaper. Now I show you how to adjust the settings in Prusa Slicer to be able to print a Banshee in less than 30 minutes by obeying the speed Banshee rules. Open the print settings and change the layer height and the first layer height to 0.25mm. Also set the solid layers for top and bottom to 3. Set the infill density to 10. To reduce the printing time further, set combine infill every layer to 2. Change the skirt and brim options so that no skirt and brim is printed. I also deactivated add auto generated supports, though I don't know if that makes a difference. The values on the speed page are most important. I set them all to 0 except travel speed, which I set to 150mm per second, and first layer speed, which I let be slower at 35mm per second. Since I want Clipper to go to the limits, 
I set the max print speed to 10,000 mm per second and the maximum volumetric speed to 13.5, which is almost the maximum of the volumetric flow my hot end can achieve. If the mechanical restrictions of the Illigo Neptune wouldn't prevent me from trying it out, then upgrading the hot end with one capable of extruding three times more and setting the speed up to 500 mm per second would do it. Because we are pushing a lot of filaments through the hot end, I increase the hot end's temperature by 20 degrees to 230 degrees so that it has enough power to melt the filament. An issue when printing that fast is that the filament has not enough time to cool down. To help the filament to cool, I enable keep fan always on and I disable enable auto cooling, which could slow down the printer in case the layer time is not long enough. In the printer settings, I set clipper as a G-code flavor. Also, that machine limits should only be applied for time estimations. And most important, set almost any value of the machine limits to zero, except for the maximum feed rate for the extruder, which I let be at 150 mm, and the acceleration limits for X and Y, which I know from the input shaping test. I set them a little bit higher, but that's okay. Before testing these settings out, let's talk about the pros and cons of the MKS Pi and if it's worth getting one. So let's summarize what we've got. Is the MKS Pi worth it? Yes. But of course it has pros and cons. It's more affordable than a Raspberry Pi and it's available. It has enough power to run your 3D printer with Clipper. MakerBase provides a full system image with all features you need to get Clipper running, support for webcams and accelerometers. It comes with pre-installed interfaces to use Clipper from your web browser. It has touch screen support. On the con side, we have it can't be powered using the USB-C port. That's really a pity. Furthermore, it doesn't provide many GPIO pins for additional usage. Just has the pins for the ADXL sensor and the other pins seem to be for debugging purposes. No Wi-Fi support on board, so you need to use a USB Wi-Fi adapter. And the touch screen isn't very reliable. I put a lot of effort in making this video. You can show me your appreciation by giving me your like and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss the following episodes. And also leave me your comment in the comment section. I will do my best to answer them all. That's it. Now enjoy printing at higher speeds while maintaining good print quality.